And good morning. It is five o'clock on this Wednesday, July the 1st. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, yesterday, some people saw brief periods of some heavy rain, and it was an overcast and humid day for the most part. For Brandon, the overcast was not a problem. Actually, it became a problem because, Brandon, you sent me a picture. Your head's burnt from yesterday. We had a, crew, we had a cookout at work. We social distanced, but you got a little fried on the top of your noggin. Yeah, I thought that the clouds would protect me. It's like, I don't need a hat. It's cloudy today. Well, guess what? That was not the case at all. And you can see the redness this morning. But again, we're going to see more chances for scattered showers and storms today. We're actually picking up on a couple already on top of this. I'm going to zoom in there and take you a little closer up into Wolf County, parts of uh, Menifee County there, over into parts of Morgan County, right along basically the Wolf Morgan County line there. So just to be aware of some heavy rain up that way this morning. Also some up Menifee County near Frenchburg this morning. So we're tracking all that, but that's about the only game in town so far. Dense fog this morning, zero visibility or close to it, a big chunk of the area. So just kind of keep that in mind, especially in those big sandy counties there going up toward northeastern Kentucky and into southwest Virginia, close to zero visibility in a lot of areas. We take a look at our temperatures and yeah, they're pretty mild and muggy this morning. They're running in the 60s and 70s. As you head out the door, we're going to continue to see that trend. Dew points, yeah, feels pretty sticky out there. So just be ready for that. That air you can wear as soon as you hit the door. Out the door forecast, we are going to see temperatures climb into the mid 80s this afternoon. And again, those chances for rain linger for one more day as we enter July here. Happy July, by the way. And we had deeper into the forecast. Things are going to change in a better way in some ways. I'll have that coming up for you in just a little bit. We'll all righty, Brandon. Thank you, sir. Well, Governor Andy Bashir says Kentucky remains in a plateau when it comes to new COVID-19 cases. Last night, the governor announced 282 more people have tested positive. It raises the state's total to 15,624. The governor also announced the deaths of five more people. June has recorded the highest number of cases we have seen in Kentucky in one single month with 6,200 reported cases. We also learned of a new COVID-19 related death in Jackson County yesterday. The Cumberland Valley District Health Department says 14 people have died in Jackson County since the pandemic began. Well, during the governor's update yesterday, we learned the state will take new steps to help those who have lost their job during the COVID-19 pandemic. The state government has contracted an accounting firm to help the, with the process to process those claims. Ernst & Young will provide 200 people to assist Kentucky's designed unemployment office. Their goal is to process about 56,000 claims within one month. The $7.4 million contract will be paid for by CARES Act funding. Well, Pike County officials hosted a news conference at the Pike County Courthouse yesterday saying they are worried about the increase in positive cases. Public Health Director Tammy Riley announced two new cases since Monday for a total now of 87 in the county. With 25 active cases, most of which are linked to one other one or another or to travel. She says people should remain cautious. Pikeville Medical Center infectious disease specialist Dr. Fadi L. Cross agrees. If we're going to basically put our guards down and keep basically moving from community to another community and, and not follow the restriction policies, what are we going to do? We're going to bring the infection here to our area. Judge Executive Ray Jones says tightening restrictions only works if people are willing to follow them and he does not want the fiscal court to have to make any more ordinances, but he says people have to take the virus seriously, especially as we enter the holiday weekend. Well, in response to that increase in positive cases, Pike County is increasing its testing capabilities by bringing back the Kroger Health COVID-19 testing tent. drive through testing is open behind Shelby Valley High School. The testing is free and self-administered, but officials say someone will be on site to coach people through what they call a quick, painless process. They say you never know how beneficial the test could be. A lot of the, the positives that we are identifying have no symptoms, so that definitely is a reason to come out. And we can test people without symptoms, with symptoms. Um, we're glad to test anybody. The site only tested around 50 people on Tuesday, but has the capability to test 1,200. Testing will continue at Shelby Valley through tomorrow from 730 in the morning until 230 in the afternoon.
Well, during this pandemic, nursing homes have been hit the hardest, which is why Christian Health Center in Corbin took extra precautions and tested everyone at the center in early June. Luckily, all of those tests came back negative, but within weeks, it was a far different story. What began with one employee showing symptoms quickly escalated as the Christian Health Center announced Friday that 55 people at the center have now tested positive. Since that announcement, five more staff members have tested positive, bringing the total to 60 cases. WIMT's Emily Bennett talked with officials at the center yesterday. We'll hear more from them in our six o'clock hour. Well, a Facebook post in Boyd County is going viral as one woman shares her raw emotions after losing her father to COVID-19 in March. Aaron Jordan was Boyd County's first related death to the virus. And as cases surge all across the country, his daughter Sierra wants people to realize the virus is real and it is here. It is why she made the Facebook post, showing a raw moment as she cries over her father's grave. The post says in part, quote, while you are over Corona, I have to sit over my father's grave just to be close to him because of Corona. While her post reached thousands of users, her feed is also flooded with posts promoting the opposite. We're trying to navigate through life now without our dad and it's hard and it gets even harder when we get on these social media platforms and we see these people just talking about how it's fake and how it's not real. We see people just attacking each other and talking about how it's fake or it's a part of a political agenda and I just wanted people to see that my dad wasn't anything, he wasn't a part of anything like that. Sierra hopes her post opens eyes and hearts to the toll COVID has had on not only her family, but hundreds of thousands just like hers. Well, thank you for getting your day started with us right here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up, we'll show you how one new project hopes to fix street flooding that has been a safety hazard in Louisa for years. New month, but the same old forecast, at least for today. Some changes are on the way that we'll talk about. It.